Finally, in September 2011, Kasana brought on board Ahmad Jahari Yahya as Masa's new CEO. Known to his friends as AJ, formerly the CEO of the country's largest independent power producer, Malakoff, he now found himself captaining a gradually sinking ship. A position that many in the industry said was not of his own choosing. In 2011, Mas recorded a net loss of 2.52 billion ringgit. According to the company, the losses were due to high expenses, including a 25% increase in fuel expenses and a 50% increase in non-fuel expenses. Along the way, there were a couple more injections by the government. In 2012, there was an injection of 6.3 billion ringgit consisting of a 5.3 billion loan and a 1 billion suko. In 2013, there was another 5 billion ringgit comprising another 2.2 billion suko and 2.8 billion accumulated losses by Penabang and Malaysia Berhad. Mas was in total crisis, so AJ executed yet another business turnaround plan in December. Now his business plan included operating in smaller and profitable network, root rationalisation program, win back customers, focus on reducing the company's costs, keep the business simple and competitive, and improve business model and operations. By the second quarter of 2013, Mas recorded an operating profit of 8 million ringgit compared to an operating loss of 102 million ringgit a year before that. The group had a stronger year-on-year -year performance with a 14% increase in revenue and a 19% increase in capacity. Overall traffic increased 29% and seat loads climbed to a 10-year record high of 80%. By the end of 2013, the airline had reported a net profit of 51.4 million ringgit. All was going well for Mas and AJ during his first couple of years. AJ's strategy was different from Idris's, more similar to that of a low-cost carrier. AJ concentrated on filling up seats rather than yields, emphasising that the planes were at least not flying at a loss, referred to as a load-active, yield-passive strategy. How it would have ended up, we will never really know. Because in 2014, the impossible happened. On March 18, 2014, MH370, a Boeing 777 flying from Malaysia to China, carrying 239 souls on board, including the crew, vanished without a trace. This threw mass and sent the country reeling. But before anybody could catch their breath, just four months later on July 17th, MH17 also went down during a routine flight between Amsterdam and Malaysia, presumed to be shot down during the ongoing war in Donbass and crashed near Torres, Ukraine. There were no survivors. It is unheard of in aviation history for any airline to have two planes go down in such a short span of time. Now coming back to the present day, Mas has been bought over by Kazana. In its current state, there was no other way for the government to save the airline without bleeding more money or resulting to bankruptcy. Kazana developed a recovery plan to relist the company and restore back the nation's pride. The restructuring will be staged across five years with clear milestones. First, by the end of 2014, Kazana will have completed the delisting, taking complete ownership of Mas, and Mas will have launched key performance improvement initiatives. Second, by July 1st, 2015, Mas will complete migration to the new legal entity, the new Mas. The new CEO and management team will have taken on the leadership mantle. Third, by the end of 2017, the new Mas is targeted to return to profitability. Lastly, by 2020, Kazana hopes to have the option of relisting or selling Mas. In order to hit these milestones, Kazana has developed a 12-point mass recovery plan to help guide its course. So let's go through what each point talks about. 1. Delisting and relisting mass. Aiming to be relisted, Kazana will consider a sell-down or partial sell-down of Kazana's stake if financial conditions are met. Which leads to the second point, total restructuring and investment funding amounting up to 6 billion ringgit to be dispersed in a staggered basis subject to certain milestones. 3. Reset the operating business model through a more regionally focused network. 4. Consolidate headquarters and operations from Subang to KLIA. 5. Strengthening the assurance, integrity and safety functions. 6. Review and renegotiate supply contracts. Analysts are saying that Brimes will most likely find itself a target of this. 7. Leadership. AJ will continue to lead Mas as the group's CEO during this period until 1st July 2015 when the new Mas is envisaged to come into force. And Mas will get its first foreign CEO in the form of Christoph Muller, formerly of Aer Lingus, who is responsible for the Irish Airlines turnaround. 8. Right-sizing the workforce to an estimated 14,000 employees for the new Mas. The new Mas will reduce the workforce by 30% from the current 20,000 staff to 14,000. 9. Strengthen industrial relations and internal alignment. 10. Reskilling, job creation and redeployment for staff who will not be migrating to the new mass. 
11. Appropriate government support on key initiatives including the establishment of an aviation commission. And lastly, continuous communications and stakeholder engagement, keeping transparency between them. This will increase accountability and trust, which must find itself thin on. As you can see, this recovery plan has been thoroughly devised from each corner in order to make sure that the nation's pride is listed once again. So recapping on this analysis, let's take a look at where the former CEOs are at right now. Tajuddin Ramli is in the midst of his ongoing court case with Mas. He's been trying to file for an appeal with the Court of Appeal in 2010, Putrajaya had also intervened to put an end to the controversial legal battle by ordering all suits against the ex mas chief dropped. This move was described as an attempt by the government to cover up details from Tajuddin's affidavit, but that failed and he is now embroiled with at least 52 cases. Idris Jala is still the CEO of Pamandu and was appointed minister into the Prime Minister's office. And Tuko Azmil is in Kazana, still holding the position as an executive director. AJ is still the CEO of Malaysia Airlines. His contract was only meant to last three years, ending on September 2014. However, in the midst of looking for a replacement, Mas has extended his contract for another year. So, were any of these CEOs really responsible for the state that Mas is in right now? So after all this analysis, one question remains. Is there anything worth saving in Mas? There are three other local airlines based in Malaysia, with the low-cost and hybrid players aiming to be a cheaper alternative to Mas and are not shy about adding capacity every year. So is saving the nation's flagship an action out of pride? Should we have faith in Kazana's plan, or should they have bitten the bullet and bankrupted the airline? History shows this is what happened to Japan Airlines, and yet it still emerged from the flames a stronger entity. I leave you with something that Kazana CEO Tansri Azman Mokhtar said at the announcement of the turnaround plan. We will save Mas, but not at any cost. After so much has been already ploughed in, only time will tell whether these words will really hold true. I hope this has been both comprehensive and helpful. I'm Nadia Hassan, BFM 89.9.